We should never allow the government to decide what is acceptable speech and what is unacceptable speech. Um, we, should, we should penalize behaviors, not opinions, and not speech. Uh, if you start trying to regulate speech, you start trying to regulate uh, thoughts, you start trying to regulate beliefs rather than behaviors, uh, there's no way that you're not going to abridge the constitutional rights of millions of Americans. I had a dream today that I wanted to share. Uh, possibly I'll make a video of this, but uh, for the past four years that I've been uh, doing my videos about little Omar on deck niche, I had a dream today where I was living with his family in Aleppo, and the assumption was that it's been like maybe two years and in the process of this, I more or less was there just to kind of um, to get to know him, to uh, um, to help him if I could there in the home with his with his sisters and his brother and his parents. And the premise became that um, the uh, the real reason I was there was not so much also of just getting to know him, but that I've always had a desire that I might one day be able to ask if he would let me hug him. And uh, I didn't have very much of any people there who knew English, and I guess that's one reason why all I could do was just try to, to interact with them and be there for them if they needed something. And then one day there was... Uh, occasion where this woman showed up who I thought she was probably a, a uh, an acquaintance that they knew there in Aleppo but she appeared to be English she was American or I thought she was American and then the first thing I thought was maybe she's actually a, a reporter maybe they were doing some follow-up you know interview and I asked her I said do you know Arabic at all you know can you speak it and she said yeah I, I know a few words and so um, I asked her, I said, well, could you do me a favor and and ask Almron if I could hug him? And then uh, more or less the story changed from that point, and I had other things that I had to do uh, around the house to help them out. And in a couple of minutes or so after I started to do these tasks, I turned around and there was Almron, standing there and he had his hands outstretched and uh, he grabbed me and hugged me and I hugged him real real tight because that's that was sort of like for me my greatest hope my greatest desire was to try to to reach out to him and to hug him I kept hoping maybe one one day I might meet him and I'd have that chance to to embrace him to hug him just to say you know people love you Omron not just me but millions of other people around the world and that's what my hope was, to to hug him and to project all of our love for him in one big, big grasp, you know, one embrace, you know. And so I had that experience in my dream. And the first thing that I thought of after that was kind of a letdown, like I've, I've accomplished what I really hoped to do in meeting Omron. And then the first thing I thought of was, this means I got to leave. I got to go back to, uh, I got to return to the United States because now I guess that could have maybe been the, the ultimate task of why I sought him out, you know, was to get to know him, to be friends. But then also that, that ultimate task was to reach out and hug him if he would let me. And up until then, I didn't know how to communicate with him. So uh, that happened. And uh, before I woke up, I, I had the impression that I was starting to pack up everything that I had brought with me. And uh, then I guess I did come back to the States, but uh, it never got that far. I woke up. And so there I am in bed, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I had this really sense of a uh, deep sense of, of just grief or just, you know, regret that, the, that maybe that's what I was hoping for in, in sharing my videos. One day I'd have that chance to, to hug him. 
and then it would be over, you know, and you felt like, <laughs> was there any other purpose behind sharing my feelings? And of course, my answer is now, yes, there are hundreds, millions of reasons I did the videos and still do the videos for Omron because I love him and I'll never change that feeling that I have for him. And more importantly, um, you know, love is what makes the world go round. It, it's what drives people to keep going to make things and do things. And that's why for me, even I, if I never meet Omron in my life, if I never get that chance to hug him, my desire is that I might could reach out to him through other ways. Someday maybe I would have the chance to <laughs> to meet somebody that that knows Omron. Maybe he lives or they live right near him. And they might could go to his house and hug him and maybe video that embrace and they might share it with the world. And then in itself that could be a, an accomplishment, you know, of me getting the chance to see somebody hug him and know that it, it's not me doing it, but it's it's somebody else, you know, who had that opportunity. And uh, beyond this dream, I I wanted to share this really in the last couple of years since it happened. I know a lot of people in my church that um, have families, and we we do Bible studies uh, on Sunday evenings. And uh, there was this one time I had a chance to meet this family that had a small daughter. She was like four years old. And, uh, you know, she, she liked me, and I, I, I squeezed her hand. I, I grasped her hand, I squeezed it, and I thought at that moment, I thought, oh, if this could have been Omron's hand that I was reaching out to, who I was grasping in my hand, I've always wished that somehow Omron might have felt that squeeze of her hand at that moment in time, that he he got that, like, telepathic message from me, and that he felt his own hand being squeezed. I thought I'd share that in this video, because that's kind of why it, for me, that's something that is very personal, you know. I had that one chance to, to to squeeze a child's hand who normally I never get a chance to be around really small children. And when I squeezed that girl's hand, that child's hand, I just thought, oh, if this somehow could reach your hand right at that moment, Omron, I wish I could say that to you, that we love you, we care about you. That's what I would have wanted to say to him if he had been there. I would say, Omron, I and millions of other people love you, and our love stretches beyond the borders of countries, beyond the borders of an ocean that separates us. You know, love is just beyond comprehension for how people feel about each other, that it doesn't have to be concern for somebody that's right next door to you or somebody in the next state or in the next city or whatever it's 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 to me it's universal it's everywhere you can express yourself to people anywhere in the world and in my case the only way I know to reach out to Omron is through these visuals these videos that I make because I know I'll probably never meet them in person but that dream today kind of hit my gut I thought I do all the videos, and I try as much as I can to express my feelings about him in those videos, but it's not like the instances where you have dreams, and they're very personal, and they hit you right in the heart. And when I had it today, I thought, I've got to put this down on an audio track. I've got to get this down so that people can hear what happened when I was, you know, there, when I saw him. How was it? And... <laughs> I just, I'm happy I did it because I'll try to share this in some future video about, you know, other experiences I've had or, you know, uh, before I end this, let me say one other video. I'm sure I've done this and already shared it, but um, that year that everybody saw Omron in 2017, it's a year after the attacks in Aleppo, his father went public with Omron's uh, experience, you know, and they gave everybody a chance to see what he looks like after the, the injuries and everything. And that night, I prayed about Omron. I asked God, if there's any way you could help me reach out to him to communicate with him, I'd so much appreciate it. And 
while I was in bed and I was about to fall asleep, I didn't, I hadn't fallen asleep yet. I was still awake. I had a visual impression to come up in my, in my eyesight. And I saw two different places at the same time. Um, they were, um, visualizations of like these small windows. One window showed, um, a scene of a of a street and that it's sort of like you were looking out this window um, of where children were playing on an average street in Aleppo because I saw this this particular place uh, in a in a story that they did about Omron's home and the other was a picture of the window of uh, the apartment where um, you see the curtains behind them in the apartment all the time. Well, I saw these things before, really, the first interviews were done in June of 2017. I had this visual impression maybe a couple of months before. And um, when I saw this happening, I thought, these must be the places where Omron lives. This is this is the street where he lives. This is his house, his home, because I don't see these things all the time. I've I've had some visual uh, visions of things, but never to the to the level of seeing two different things at the same time. And I still contend uh, of that experience. God answered my prayer. He allowed me to see the place where Omron lives in Aleppo. He was saying, this is how Omron lives every day. This is where he lives. And uh, though I couldn't communicate through these visions, I at least had the chance to observe these places. And that's that's the only other experience I've had about Omron that I could relate to is something that I had an experience of being there where he was. And then also there was another dream. I think it was probably a day or so even before that. I I dreamed that I went to his house and I met his father. And uh, I've shared this in another video, I know, because I can remember describing this. But, you know, this is, this is about the time probably that, you know, Omron was at full recovery. You know, he was still not quite four years old. And uh, in my dream, I, I held his hands and walked him on my feet. He would stand on my feet, and I was walking and just kind of walking him back and forth, you know, kind of like saying, you know, I love you, Omron. I'm here for you. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to interact with you or react with you. And uh, his father was real happy about that one experience, and uh Finally, he told me, he said, well, we have to go now. So, you know, I just felt how lucky I was that I had some interaction with Omron after everybody had seen him hurt in the ambulance and that I had that chance to play with him in a way, you know, even though, okay, it's a dream, it's probably not real, but still, that's what I remember about it. But those are those are very personal reflections of things that I have experienced since I saw that that first night in, in August of 2016 when Omron was hurt and he was in the ambulance. These are the only other visions I've had. This is the most recent dream I've had where that feeling I have always felt for him having asked myself, asking God, please let me be able to one day hug him, maybe and so when it happened today, I thought, I'm not going to let this day go by that I don't at least put it down audio. But anyway, we're talking December 2nd, 2020. And that's a, um, that's a Wednesday afternoon. I had the dream sometime between uh, 5 o'clock and uh, 7 tonight. And... I will never forget it, just like I won't ever forget those other dreams. Because whenever I have the chance to experience any communication or contact or telepathy with through Almer and with him about something, I, I want to write it down or I want to try to put it down in a way that I can go back and I can use it again later. 
So thank you for this chance again to share another experience I've had of seeing Omron in a other than direct contact with him. This is through a mental telepathic contact, I think, through him, to him, through God. God allowed me that chance to see Omron again. And I just pray maybe these contacts, maybe he did sense those contacts for me. Maybe he did actually see them or feel them. But thanks for letting me share. And maybe other people who love him as much as me will share their own experiences in the future. Thank you.